Oh boy. Oh, Arsides. What's up, people? Hope you're all doing well. Welcome back to more esports talk. Certainly a debatable interview. I will link down the full thing for you guys. Uh, it's a great interview. I love Arsides. You love an open and honest guy out there, but it certainly makes me think, especially with the title, we already know he has said some concerning things about the Huntsman ever since, I would say, maybe a bit of a tail off, especially with online league play and also resuming uh, very, very soon here, some very concerning statements around him and his team and a variety of statements, I should say, as well which I do find, first of all, it's a double-edged sword, right? You love a guy who is transparent, open, and honest. You love to see the problems that you never would know about unless they say them. On the flip side, if, if I was Hector or maybe if I was some other organizational owner, I might be saying, eh, Arsides, yeah, chill on the interviews, man. Maybe don't give all of our problems away to the public. He has said a variety of things about the Huntsman, what they are struggling with, some of which might surprise you, some of which might not. Very well. So props to them. So I just think they're going in there with a better mindset than us, just trying to straight up gun people. And so, does that mean your fundamentals are maybe not as good? Oh, or yeah, hundred that... percent. We, oh, we that, don't okay. know how to play the game. Oh wow! I mean, it seems like it, it does sound like a that too. Yeah, it does sound like a bold statement, man. That you don't know how to play the game. There's no way. I mean, I mean, it, other, insight. Other I like than the, uh, other than the, I have not had teammates that didn't wake up on time. I, <laughs> Can, can you this can you a, say can you say who said teammate or time. teammates yeah, are? I say, the, the people know it's formal and gunless. It's uh, Come on. I mean I understand formal situation. I like gunless. He he put he like there's a week where he streamed like eighteen hours a day, and I was like, dude, you're crazy. But um, there's no excuse. This is a job. This is a if obviously people had real jobs before. Um, yeah. I have. If I ever showed up late, I'm I'm fired instantly. You're fired. Hunter's so, is real close. So I mean, we're gonna get we're gonna get a lot of flack for this, but um, Monday or Tuesday, Tuesday was the first day we actually went into a lobby. Is six, seven, or eight of us, even Tupac and General, are in there, and uh, we actually went over S and D stuff. That, oh, that wow. was the first time this year. It, this this instead, late instead into the of season? Yes, yes. Instead of scrimming, we just went in there as uh, uh, us a and went over stuff like what we want to do on the map and where we want to go and how do we feel on the map because mm -hmm. after we lost at Piccadilly to Florida we were like yeah. dude it just felt uncomfortable because we had like one right. strat and Seth just was like dude I don't know what I'm doing right now well, I was going to say is that map specific feeling uncomfortable or is no. that just your entire search I think entire search I just think that's so you understand the idea that no one's listening at any point throughout the squad has anyone thought a team like a, like bringing Jordan, bringing General off the bench and putting him in the main roster, has that ever been in discussion? Because um, he's a very good player. Again, <clears throat> uh, I'm being straight up with you guys. Uh, I did. I uh, there was a week right before well, Dallas. This was the last event. Yep. Yeah, a week before that, we didn't win a map for like um, three you, you days, getting, four days. You get tired. Yeah. Yeah, it was when me I was running a I was running a flex and I that like right uh right after that, I was like yo let me run the AR because Matt was just sitting there complaining about the MP5 which every AR does <laughs> but I was like I I I, I told Troy on the side I was like Troy if we don't win a if we don't win a map today I'm gonna spectate <laughs> I want to see what these guys are doing on the map to make us lose because I know I know it's me it's all of us I'm like dude what's going on like and for me the biggest thing by far besides the waking up late you know you can get over that we need to be better friends we heard that with the old optic roster so that maybe spells a few uh signs of trouble there as well you know if it's not your in-game play oh if we're just better friends we'll get we'll get along better in the real world all of a sudden it'll transition into the um, actual game i don't know if that's a confirmed theory uh, the most important thing i wanted to touch on was the fact it took until this late in the season for them to touch on SND in actual detail, bring in the full squad to talk about their troubles and their struggles when it comes to SND and potentially other game modes. You even see Benson in the video go, it this late in the season? And especially, I know we talk about the money all day long, right? And when it comes to these guys, a lot of them, especially with the former Optic boys, probably being paid the higher parts of the salary on this team. And these guys obviously making a good chunk of change. And of course, the team themselves paying a big chunk of money to actually participate in Call of Duty League. It taking this long into the season, several events into the season to finally talk about their in-game strats and issues and tactics. 
that's concerning. And yes, I've seen plenty of comments on both sides of this. Yes, it's concerning. Yes, it's great that Alec is just open and honest. Again, I can't stress enough how much I love this kind of stuff. And he does joke a lot in, in the interview as well. I highly encourage you guys to watch it. But as a fan of any team out there, if this was your team, I, I hear this and I see a lot of problems that are unresolved, a lot of problems that don't have solutions quite yet, and there are a lot of problems that took this long into the season to finally be addressed. That's got to be at least, at, come on, at least a little bit concerning for a few of you guys. Especially when he just straight up says, we still don't know how to play the game. They're relying practically off sheer skill right now and sheer gunpower. And uh, yeah, that can get you pretty far when it comes to Call of Duty. But now we go even further into online events where it seems that despite all the other issues with the current Call of Duty and this team, now we have lag and ping and connection issues to add on to that. Yeah, we're going to see how this home event for Chicago does go and uh, if this team can really work things out. Even the fact that Arcee's mentions he wanted to bring another member in. He wanted to bring General into the roster and uh, actually see what issues were at hand with the team. He actually wanted to sub General in so he could spectate and see who was the issue or who was killing the team, which goes to show you Arcee's, at least by this interview, it seems to be one of the more driven characters on this team. This is a weird one, guys. I don't know how to break this one down. Certainly two sides of the story. What do you guys think about this? RC is being very honest about the current issues inside the Chicago Huntsman. Until next time, hope you guys all enjoy breaking down Call of Duty, esports, gaming news every single day, all day long. Until next time, take care. Drink your Wawa. Drink your coffee. Okay, bye.